Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special CUBE Conversations here at the CUBE Studio in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier here for a special Women in Tech and Technovation Conversation with uh, Tara Chekwowski, founder and CEO of Indescent, also runs Tech Nation, and Anar Simpson, global ambassador of Tech Nation. Great Women in Tech Conversation. You guys have done amazing work. You're both rock stars. Thanks for spending the time. Just had a great chat about uh, your event. You had the 2017 World Pitch Competition for Girls in Entrepreneurship and Coding and, and uh, everything else. Congratulations. So tell us about Technovation. What are you guys doing? You guys are doing some amazing work. Tara, start us off. What's, what's the, where are you guys and what's going on? So Technovation is the world's largest technology entrepreneurship program for girls and girls aged middle, middle school and high school um, are challenged that you have to find a problem in your community. They learn how to code a mobile app and learn how to start a startup from scratch all the way to the pitch video business plan. And through that process, they are partnered with a Women in Tech mentor, and they go through a 100-hour learning experience. At the end of it, they have to submit their apps and business plans um, for judging. And we have thousands of judges who are experts in tech from all over the world review those, and then we have a quarterfinal, semifinal, and then the big world pitch uh, competition that was held last week here in Silicon Valley. I mean, this sounds so progressive and cutting edge. It sounds like what Palo Alto High School would do with Menlo and Sacred Heart and Castilea, but this is not just Silicon Valley. This is, I mean, talk us a little about the scope of the, the program. How do people get involved? Share some of the data. Yeah, totally, and so it is um, all over the world. We run in 100 different countries, primarily brought and expanded through our work um, that our global ambassador NAR has done. And most of it is really trying to bring girls who would never have been exposed to technology entrepreneurship careers. Um, and the way we work is really through partnerships, amazing organizations and visionary leaders who do the hard work of actually mm -hmm. supporting these girls, getting these girls interested. So these girls would typically never go into careers in tech because they never see themselves as being interested. And so the hook is that you, s you want to find a problem in your community, you have to go out, talk to people, try to understand what is a big problem that is worth mm -hmm. solving. And then we say, oh, by the way, you know, you can solve this problem using technology. And so you get in a whole another uh, group of people that would net not normally um, access these. So careers. is it an application process? Can Is it in the U.S.? Can so anyone in the U.S.? Anybody. So my daughter who wants to get some community hours could actually go take it to a whole other level. Totally. Um, so you can just register. We haven't launched the new season yet, but it'll be out, out live um, in October. Sign up, find a team of girls, and uh, there's actually a documentary, an award-winning documentary done about the program. Mm -hmm. So the same woman who did Inconvenient Truth uh, wanted to profile women in tech, and she did a whole documentary about uh, technovation, and it's called Code Girl, and you can get, up, get it on any online video. That's awesome. Platform. Well, congratulations. It's super impressive work, very inspirational. Um, and Anar, you're bringing the global perspective in, and we were talking before we came on camera, mm -hmm. that you had a goal. Share with us your five-year goal and, and an update of where you are and taking this out beyond uh, the United States. Sure, so um, you know, five years ago, um, I was a mentor um, for Technovation. It was my first time, um, and it was an amazing experience. Um, and uh, we uh, won in the local competition and the uh, regional competition and then placed third um, you know, in, in the final competition. And after that, I had a conversation with Tara about the amazing experience that I had. Um, and we were chatting and, and she said, you know, I, she'd love to take this globally. And uh, being the type A and the <laughs> enthusiast that I am, I said, oh, well, okay, that's fine. You know, I come from Kenya. I've lived in Canada. Um, so we've got <laughs> the perfect mix. <laughs> yeah, three <laughs> countries already, but yeah. I'm sure we can take it global. Well, in fact, with, um, with our work together, you know, I was able to take Technovation to 18 countries in the first year, um, 34 countries in the second year, uh, 72 countries in the third year, and this year we're at over 100 countries. And it hasn't been an easy road. Um, it's, we keep saying this to each other. <laughs> we just keep trying. Our, our focus is mm -hmm. on getting this program. We don't you know, get caught into anything politics or any otherwise. Um, and we just want to get to as many girls as we can. And as Tara said, you know, partnerships have played an immense role in mm -hmm. getting um, Technovation all over, the, all over the world. Uh, so initially it was just cold calls. You know, people I knew in <laughs> Kenya, people I knew in Canada, people I knew in LinkedIn, my little circle. But then my circle got bigger and bigger. And then, um, you know, lots and lots of um, 
opportunities presented themselves. And one of them was the um, Tech Women program uh, that's run by the State Department. Uh, they bring in senior technical women to Silicon Valley for an internship. And then I said to them, oh, and when they get, go back home, what do they do? Well, shouldn't they do tech related? <laughs> and so we've, we've uh, you know, done good partnerships with them. We've done a good partnership with the UN Women. Uh, we've been profiled in the United Nations um, high-level panel report. Mm -hmm. uh, and these things keep happening. And the, um, but it's not just because of the, uh, the community or the relationships we're building. Our program works. It is credible. Our impact reports show that these girls end up in uh, tech-related uh, fields as yeah. they progress. And that's the whole point of our purpose, right, is to say, look, girls everywhere uh, should be um, entering technology fields. And what Tech Innovation does is it's building a pipeline of young girls to enter these careers all over the globe. Well, it's no secret to the folks that know me and watch theCUBE and uh, know the Silicon Valley that I'm a huge proponent for computer science. And, you know, as kind of someone who kind of fell into that in the 80s, it's now become very interesting in that the surface area for computer science has increased a lot. And it's not just, you know, coding and heads down and squashing bugs and writing code. Mm -hmm. There's been a whole nother evolution of soft skills, agile, cloud. You've seen mm -hmm. a tr full transformation with the potential unlimited compute available. Mm -hmm. With mobile now 10 years plus into the iPhone, you see new infrastructure developing. So it creates the notion that, okay, you can bring the science of computers to a whole other level. That must be attractive as you guys have that capability to bring that to bear in the programs. Can you guys comment on how you guys see just the role of computer science uh, playing out? This is not a gender thing, it's just more of, you know, as I you know, have oh. a young daughter, I try to say, it's not just writing code. You can certainly whip out a mobile app, but it's really bringing design to it or yes. bringing a personal passion that you might have. So. Yeah. What, what are that? some of the patterns you're seeing in the surface I area of, of what's now known as computer science? I think it's super important because as technology has progressed, um, we've been able to provide this program. If, if we were still programming with, um, you know, the, the in front of uh, screens and, and doing the what you see is what you get kind of thing, without we would not be there. I think the big thing that's happened in the last 10 years is the mobile mm -hmm. phone. I mean, if you find a girl anywhere today mm -hmm. in the world, chances are she'll have a mobile phone on her and she's going to be loathe for you to take that one thing from her. You could take other things from her, but try taking that phone away from her. She will not let you. And so the fact that she's so attached to that mobile phone means that you can then tell her, hey, you don't have to be just a consumer of that thing. You can be a producer of that thing. Mm -hmm. Anything that you see on there, you can actually design. This is power. This yeah. is your thing to, 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 to uh, good and great and better. And if we can shift that in their minds that this is their link to the world that's wide open. We're seeing that. Well, the world is consumed by, I mean, a lot of women in the world will be cons consumers of product. Mm -hmm. um, certainly with AI, the conversation over the weekend I was having with folks is the role of women is super important, not just in AI, but as software becomes cognitive, you have to align with half the audience that's out there. Mm -hmm. So um, it's be hard for a guy to program something that's going to be more oriented towards a woman. But, but it brings up the question of application and whether it's self-driving cars or utility from, you know, from work to play mm -hmm. and everything in between, software and the role of software is going to be critical. And that seems to be pretty, pretty clear. The question is, how do you inspire young girls? That's the, that's the question that a lot of um, fellow males that I talk to who are fathers of daughters and or are, are promoting women in tech and, and, and see that vision. What are some of the inspiration areas? How do you really shake the interest and how do you have someone really kind of dig in and enjoy it and taste it and, and right. feel it? Right. So, uh, so there's some research to back like the, what the formula is that works and uh, to drive change in behavior. And so there's this, the, one of the biggest sort of names in cognitive psychology is Albert Bandura. He's a professor at, at, at Stanford. But basically, it's the same principles that drive, say, de-addiction from alcohol or weight loss or any kind of new behavior change. So the first is um, you need to have exposure to someone whom you respect, um, showing that this is something of meaning. And so the key words are someone you respect, right? And so media can play a very big role here because for scale, right? Otherwise, it's only maybe your teacher or your parent. And if they're not exposed to technology, they can't really affect your... Um, and so, so media can, can play a huge role there. Second is um, the experience itself, right? Like how do you get, make it easy to get started? 
And um, then it's like learning from video games, right? So you make it very, very easy. Like the first step is just come over here. It'll be fun. There's pizza. Come, right? Like your friends are coming. But then the feedback has to be very fast, right? So the first step, and that's where a good curriculum matters, right? So that's where also working on a mobile phone is very appealing, even though May apps is it's not. It's relatable. It's relatable, but the, uh, the feedback is instantaneous, right? And so the programming language that the girls use is block-based. So even though you don't have any prior programming background, you can still build a working app. So that's critical. Then human beings get tired very easily, and so the feedback needs to keep changing, right? It has to be unpredictable. The third piece is um, that of an expectations, right? So you have to have very high expectations. And so that's why this current discussion around cognitive differences in gender, I feel is missing the point because it's not what you're born with. What are you capable of, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we looked at our genetics, we would never go to space. We would never go to like the deepest parts of the ocean because we're not meant for that, right? Yeah. But we, we had really high visions and ex expectations and so human beings rose to that. And then the last piece is less relevant in developed countries, but it's still important. So it's sort of the human energy. We are not a brain dissociated from the body. Yeah. We are connected, right? And so if you're hungry and tired and sleepy, not the right uh, time to sort of make a dramatic change in like your interest. So this is relevant. Like if, you, if for us, we uh, try to figure out which countries are we going to work in, um, so post-conflict, war-torn areas are not the best yeah. areas to start a new program in. Uh, you need the right partners. So you're right. saying the biological argument of, of course, they're different, men and women. Yes. But it's the capability. That's where people were missing And the, the support system, right? Like, yeah. so have high expectations, provide them with the yeah. right support. But the most important thing is uh, your own yeah. own beliefs in, in that. Let's get your thoughts on that, because I think you're, you guys have a great program with Technovation. You mentioned mentors, key part of the formula, most likely. What we hear in the conversations I've had with uh, women peers has been, you know, there's a real call to arms at the executive level now, folks my age in the 50s who are made it, who are there succeeding. They really want to give back and they really have recognized the value of having that peer mentorship and then inspiring the young generation, whether it's part of things that we cover like Grace Hopper or Technovations, things that you do, or even just mentoring in their own communities. What does that mentorship look like that you guys see that you'd like to see double down on or areas you you'd like to see tweaked or perceptions that are mm -hmm. need to change? What's your thoughts on mentorship and the role of inspiring young girls? Mentorship for men? Men and women. I mean, oh, from both. Oh, well, I, I see the mentorship with women. That's the first step. Right. I have a whole other conversation, in my opinion, that the men need it, training. Right. Not just like go to class and learn how to talk, but mm -hmm. how to empathize. Well, my, my, my big thing has been that, um, you know, when you wanted to encourage women uh, up the ladder in your companies or you want to encourage women to actually get into technical roles, um, that that intent should not be placed in the CSR department of your organization because that speaks volumes, right, uh, to say, oh, well, that's in the, you know, social responsibility <laughs> department or the HR. That just says, okay, so, you know, you, you're not really, you don't think we're capable of, helping you with your product or service, we're, we're sort of part of this, and it's like, no, you know. So I think you want to mainstream it, which is what a lot of I&D um, things are trying to do Inclusion now. and diversity. Inclusion and diversity um, uh, tech. To make it part of the fabric, not a department checkbox. Exactly. That's what and you're getting at, right? Exactly, I mean. and you know, the, 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 um, uh, the evolvement of these departments, right, to include everybody and to make it more diverse is going to, uh, going to be, uh, not frictionless. It, it, it will be friction until a time where it won't even ne be necessary. Yeah. I and D departments sh should have one goal, which is to work themselves out of a job. If they can work themselves out of a job, then then the company would have done uh, you know what it needs to be done. But but I think um, meaning it's self sufficient, it's self governing. People are humans. It's respect yes. for individuals. Yes. I mean, this is basically comes down to if you look at it as humans, exactly. it takes it. Every conversation could be tabled as what. The per there's a person on the other side, it's a human being, right. not a woman or a white male or whatever. And you know, um, they're not there yet, but I mean, certainly that would be the end game. So, that in that scenario, that department's yeah. out of business. The INR, the Inclusion and Diversity Department, you don't need has one done because its you job. <laughs> exactly, you don't need one because you know what, you're okay. And I think capabilities is really important um, in corporations. Um, and it, this isn't anybody's fault, this is just how it's been done. This has just been the culture of it, right? Um, who gets invited to which meetings? Who gets invited to which conferences, right? And so we heard um, 
uh, the CEO of YouTube, Susan Wojcicki, saying, you know, she had to sort of elbow a little bit to say, why, why am I not allowed at a certain conference? And it's like, maybe just wake up to that and say, well, why, why aren't you involving, you know, more people at conferences and, and think yeah. tanks? Because, you know, um, I come from an oil and gas background, and people used to do a lot of deals on, on the golf course, because oil and gas people play golf a lot, and a lot of deals used to happen. Well, in the Valley, we don't play golf a lot, but we do do other things, conferences or, or, yeah. or get-togethers or what. And if you don't include the people in your team as, as groups or, or representationally, well, they, they're not going to be there when, when you make these decisions. So maybe just be a little Exclusionary bit Exclusionary is a problem. And Kleiner Perkins was uh, taken to task. They had ski trips apparently planned, and they didn't all mostly yeah. guys, and they didn't invite the woman partner. It was a big scandal. But this is where they kind of make that norm. It's a normative thing, and they've got to change the norms. It ch change the norms. And if you actually want your company, which is made of all kinds of people, to move really far ahead, don't, don't be like that. Include everybody, because the only goodness about that is you'll go forward. You don't include somebody, yeah. well, you're going to hurt them, yeah. and then they won't be able to contribute because they just can't, and then your, your, your product or your service is going you to fail. It's Susan, really simple. You mentioned the Susan Wojcicki uh, post. was an article in For Fortune magazine where she wrote a guest article, and she mentioned her daughter was at it. Yes. Was feeling the narrative, which, by the way, changed from the original yes. Google memo yes. to, to have something, a different meaning, but that's what she heard. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the question to you guys that I have on that is with technovations and the work that you're doing, you're exposed to a lot of the um, ecosystem across the world, not just in the U.S., from young girls. Yes. They see what's coming down from the top or, or the media, so certainly it's the game of telephone as things translate down to the, to the level of the girls. Is there a pattern that you see emerging in their eyes as they look at this nonsense of narratives that are moving around. It's, it is kind of a moving train in the narrative of, of gender, women in tech, but ultimately they have to internalize it. And what patterns do you see and what do you guys do to either nullify that misperception and how do you amplify the real perceptions? Can I, can I take that one? I was in Nairobi at the Safaricom headquarters. I don't know if you know Safaricom, but these are the people who uh, came up with M-Pesa and this is the currency that you can uh, you know, do on your mobile phone, and Kenya uses M-Pesa, like almost everybody in Kenya uses M-Pesa. So Safaricom is a big telco, and it's a big deal um, in Kenya. And Safaricom has taken technovation, it has embraced technovation in a big way. And the people who embraced technovation at Safaricom in a big way are both male. So um, Josephine, who was a, a tech woman uh, fellow who came here and then went back and started Technovation. Her director, Thibaut Rural, he's male, and the CEO of uh, Technovation, uh, CEO of Safaricom, is uh, Bob Collymore, and he's also yeah. male. And these men, if I could clone these men in every country with yeah. every company, you would see this this sort of um, moving away and shifting away that women aren't uh, good engineers or can't yeah. be good engineers. They are embracing it in such a way, yeah. not because they like Technovation. Because they know for their business, having more women and equal women and, 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 and a diverse company is making their product and their goods better. Yeah, they're right? arbitraging they, the they labor pool. Why would you ignore exactly. talent? Exactly. Whether they're exactly. old, older 50 or they're a woman, doesn't matter. I, I want to add to that. So there's quite a bit of data. So the patterns are not anything different from what the message girls get from school and parents, right? So if you look at the data, there are 100 countries that legally discriminate against women. And so what industry is, what message industry is telling is really, firstly, it doesn't filter through to the larger population. Silicon Valley is a completely different bubble, right? But overall, the messages girls are given is like, this is not for you, right? And so, especially in some of the most sort of populous, uh, dense countries in the world. And so we have to fight a lot of these kinds of uh, um, perceptions from the ground up, right? And the, the number one sort of gatekeeper is the father. And so a key part of what we have not done to date is to provide sort of education and training to the parents because um, there's a very moving story that uh, we work in a remote uh, town in South India and a mentor who's very dedicated has been trying to get these girls to participate in technovation. They did, he did that and then there were one girl was actually offered a job but the father kept sort of saying no, not needed, no girl in my family ever needs to work but he fought, he fought it, and so then the girl actually gets a job. 
And then uh, a year later, the father calls the mentor and said, you know what, I'm so grateful that you did it because a day after she got the job, I got hit in an accident and I lost my job. But it's these kinds of uh, perceptions that have to be changed one person at a time, which is what makes this very hard. Yeah. Um, unless you actually are able to get the, the media um, to change sort of the, the, the messaging. And I think in the US, which is, there's some very interesting studies and a question, right? Like if you were to think, um, would there be more women in STEM in poorer, developing countries versus richer, highly developed countries, where would you see more women in STEM? The answer is actually the, the women in like poorer countries like Iran, Malaysia. The reason is because in an individualistic society like in the US, uh, where there's a lot of emphasis on materialistic, but it's also about are you happy? The conversation has changed to from parents telling children, do what makes you happy. And then you're very prone to advertising, and advertising works when it's highly targeted and highly gendered. And so in the 60s, there was no such thing as pink and blue. Now there is pink and blue, right? And so now we just made our entire society entirely susceptible to advertising, right? And like girls are, are passive and compliant, and boys are aggressive, right? And so then when you're looking at the board structures, there's no, it's very, very hard to fix the problem right there, right? Yep. You have to go down deeper, because you don't get leaders who are compliant, maybe secretaries are compliant, right? But you have to fix the message that teachers give girls, that um, parents give their baby girls when they're born. And so industry is just sort of in the spotlight right now, but the issue is not that of industry, I think it's also Industry, if you look at what Sundar is supporting you guys, it's interesting that this industry seems to be chipping in, certainly Silicon Valley is a little bit different, as you said, but in general, it is a cultural mm -hmm. parent thing. Any plans there with Technovations to have a parent track? <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. yes, totally. I mean, I think right now 10% of parents actually volunteer to be mentors, kind of like, say, Girl Scout troop yeah. leaders. And so we are trying to figure out, okay, what is a way to I involve parents and to make them part of the discussion? Well, we'll keep the conversations going with Technovations. You guys are doing incredible work. Um, I'll just end the, the segment here by just telling a little about what, you, what you're working on right now. What are your goals? What are, you, what are you passionate about? What are some of the things you'd like to do in the next uh, half of the year, or next year? What are some of the things going for Tara? You start. Um, I think for us is to go deeper. So we are just launching a partnership with MIT to increase sort of the rigor of the curriculum, the, the rigor of the training, and also provide more personalized learning. And so this is the power of technology. Um, so uh, we don't want to have girls drop out of the program because it's a hard program. So really trying to bring the best from industry to support that. Right, and so you know, my goal is to get Technovation to um, all the countries in the world, uh, but keeping in mind where we, we're making sure that it's delivered in a in a really um, good way, and so girls complete the program, etc. And um, the model that I hope to replicate in many other countries is the model that we're trying with in Canada. Uh, so the new Canadian government is very um, interested in making sure that all of its citizens are. Um, you know, innovative and uh, ready for the technology change that's coming there. And uh, they launched a new fund called mm -hmm. um, CanCode. Um, and so, you know, we, we have been part of that um, application process and we hope to have um, Technovation in um, every, almost every city yeah. in Canada, across Canada, and to really get this going. And we, right now, Canada is everybody's like, you know, favorite country, and we hope that if we can do this in Canada, uh, then you know other other countries will follow, yeah. and so that this program will get to as many girls as 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 it can. Well, you know how I feel. I feel computer science training in general should be standard curriculums, because of all the conversation around automation, and automation is the fear as jobs will go away. Yeah. The data we have from our research team at Wikibon shows that the billions being automated away is non-differentiated labor which implies that the working knowledge of that those machines will shift to the value side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm on the pro side mm -hmm. of AI and automation, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. um, personally I think it's but there's an software. education side, too. There's the education side, and I think this is a real a fun area. You guys are at the cutting edge of it, both doing great work. I appreciate taking the time, and we'll have you back in for an update. Great. Tara Nar, thanks so much. This is the Cube Conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.